Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and it's time for part two of the Monday Q&A. So let's do this. First question. Should a novice lifter sitting at around 20% body fat cut a small deficit 10% or recomp like yourself and Johnny Candido have been talking about lately? And how will that affect getting to those foundational numbers, 315 times 5 squat, 405 times 5 deadlift, within a year of training? I would say that if you're only at 20% body fat and you're a true novice, definitely recomp. Do the cutting version of something like my program, if that's the program you're running. Just recomposition at your same body weight for a while. You will gain strength, you will gain muscle, you'll lose fat. It won't take that long before you're down to a reasonably healthier number, like 14-15%. Now, will it affect your total strength gains? Depends on your genetics, depends on the person. I've seen people who have done the cutting version of the program, who have been in a deficit for almost the entire time, who passed the numbers, but they were bigger, stronger, thicker framed individuals who happened to be fat already and started out relatively strong. If you're starting out as someone who's truly skinny fat, you might not hit the numbers inside of a year as a result of this, but it's not going to add a long time to it. It might take you an extra two months. It might take you 14 months instead of 12. It might take you 15 or 16 months. But the thing is, you will definitely get there a lot faster than if you just do a true cut. And even the thing to remember is, even if you recomp for a little while on it, and then you switch to the bulking version, and you just go into a very small surplus, if you're still seeing some new gains, as long as your calories are reined in pretty good, you're not eating too much dietary fat, you may still recomposition just a little bit anyways. You're only going to see fat gain when you're on a true, really good progressive overload program as a novice. If you're eating too much calories, if your surplus is getting too big, you start eating 500, 600 extra calories a day, yeah, you might see some fat gain as a novice then. But otherwise, you probably won't. On a two or 300 calorie surplus, you probably will not gain any fat if you have new gains left in the tank. And you are progressing correctly on a program. You'll gain pretty much pure muscle at that point. The intermediate, that won't happen. But a beginner, absolutely. And if that happens and you're gaining muscle without gaining fat, your body composition is changing anyways. All right, next question. Are there any negatives of one rack pulling in a higher rep range, i.e. eight to 10 reps? Yeah, why do you know that I don't like real high rep deadlifts due to form degradation? The, the same issue applies to heavy partials, particularly with a rack pull, because you can move so much weight on a rack pull. I've had times in the past where I was able to take my deadlift max, add 100 pounds to it, and crank out five rep sets in a, on a rack pull with straps. And the issue there becomes if it's causing form degradation, because even with those 10 rep sets, you're going to be moving a lot of weight if they are truly close to a 10 rep max for you and you're even a decently strong deadlifter, and even if you're not a strong deadlifter, relative to your strength limits, it's going to be a lot of weight. And so the issue that you get into when you're moving really heavy weights for higher reps is the potential for form degradation. So you need to be very careful of your form, and I would make very sure that you're doing rest pauses and resetting correctly on each rep and not just touch and go type stuff to where you're going to risk injury. That would be my concern is injury due to form degradation. Outside of that, if you're doing it purely as a hypertrophy type exercise because you want a thicker back and that's the route you want to go, that's the exercise you want to use for that, then it's perfectly viable as long as you're aware of the technique issue that you could run into if you're not careful. All right, next question. Has Bagpuss ever been to prison? I actually had to ask Bagpuss on this one, and all he said is that Whenever he needs to solve a problem, all it takes is a cock and a pop and money for bail. And he said, no, he's never been to prison. He's been to county a few times, but he was able to get out, and he had a lawyer who was able to get all the charges dropped. And he said it was really easy when some of the witnesses just didn't show up to court. All right, guys, so that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it has been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.